it says we're live. Ah. Yeah. Well, don't scroll through. Total, total spoiler alert because there's an obvious winner for the poll. Well, Gosh, David. I just wanted to show the forms. Goodness gracious. But hello. Hello there, Jonathan. To all these people. Look, it's our it's our friends, the uh, the uh, pharyngeal approximant and the glottal stop. Like that's a cool little. Oh well, hello. Face. Tincture overcast. That's the very first time I've ever said those words in that order. I feel like I'd say tincture, tincture, tincture. That's what I said. What's what's the difference you're doing there? I'm trying to do e versus i. Tincture, tincture. How do I say it? I don't know, but it's before a velar nasal, so it's got to be high. Tincture. Oh, wow. But they've been catching up for more than a year. Ooh. Ooh, that is fun. Ooh. That is very fun. Ooh. Man. We gotta be good then. Ooh. This time. We do, but I just wanted you to know it comes from tingere, to dye or color. Mm. Which is really interesting because now it's like medically yeah. is what I associated. That's really cool. Okay. Yeah, but you know where you're from if you're pronouncing it with an I. It's really weird. No, don't get David started on this. It's the same thing when you hear an A before an Angma. It's like you just know that they're not local. Again, don't get, sure. don't get David started on this. Tincture. Even though other people disagree with him, <laughs> he will he will die on that hill. Is that what you think? It is. It is. Think. Anyway, um, like so your, like your pink glasses. They're not. Oh they're, really? They're like purple. Look at that. Oh. They're like a reddish purple. What do you know? Thank you for correcting me. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> David is, is going on his little thing again, so we're just going to ignore him um, as he does that. So you go, you, go, you go read my master's thesis. It's the only it's required reading. You've got to do your homework. All right. Again, other linguists disagree with your assessment. It's okay to have Numbers different views lie. of the vowel space. Numbers don't lie. Okay, <clears throat> so, so mm -hmm. David's numbers that he found from his sampling of speakers is the, the whole story of English. All right, so mm -hmm. if Brian's here, I don't know if Brian's here yet. I, don't, I haven't seen him in the chat, but today... Today is Brian's birthday. Right on. So, happy birthday! Well, he better not be here. He better be celebrating. How is it not celebrating to watch us? Anyway. Tanguy! <laughs> um, oh, bonsoir! Oh, it is nice to have you back. Your icon has changed. I'm trying to see. It has. Ooh, it's like a handwriting, I think. It's like certainly got a pen wait is it graham's birthday too what well matei said happy birthday graham i said happy what? birthday to brian graham is it graham's birthday oh my gosh that would be so exciting uh, a double birthday and then how do you know and not we know oh, because you're the birthday queen well if graham never told me then hmm um Oh, crisps. That sounds good. Okay, anyway, so that was my, my birthday call out. Um, potentially, too, if um, I don't think Graham can watch us live these days, so usually it's after the fact that we catch up with Graham. Damn. So I'll have to, well, maybe I should message him on, ping him on Discord, be like, is it your birthday? <laughs> uh, oh, okay, that would, that's uh... really, really funny. I was like, man, there's a conspiracy to hide birthdays from me. I get it. 
Mm. <laughs> David knows why. <laughs> 205 and all kiss well. And all kiss well, that's nice, yes. All right, all right. So we have a poll, yes. which was, um, oh, maybe I just didn't enunciate very well. Mm. I mean, that happens. And I can totally get it because the names, like if you don't enunciate Brian, it just comes out as more of like a Brian and Graham comes, you know, Graham. And so like, I can totally see how those could be misheard if I was not in my super enunciative mood. And I really am not today. Today, I could actually curl up on the couch right behind us and take a nap. Um, I'm very brown. Exactly, that's exactly what I said. Mm -hmm. um, well, add into it my, my rural dialect that you so often uh, make fun of, and that'll do it. Mm. This is why this is why I'm against the long, the the central vowels. By the way, since we were talking about Pearl Jam, which we were, since we brought up the word tincture, the... from my favorite Pearl Jam song, which is I don't remember Corduroy. Oh, Corduroy was one of my favorite books when I was growing up. It when I was little. It was a very good book. Really threw me for a loop the first time I read it as an adult. Um, anyway, uh, so, tincture, I don't know, I don't remember it. Um, oh, we got a place near us called Crunchikin. What? How do I not know about Crunchikin? I told you. I pointed it out to you. I said, you know, someday we should go get Crunchikin. Oh, yeah. I heard it as crunch chicken, not crunch chicken. I don't know. Anyway, different. anyway. So that's exciting. With this poll, we came up with a couple of ideas for um, passives, and, and basically, it was whether it was going to be, um, as we call a silver tail special, which is an auxiliary. Um, or if it was going to be uh, another uh, suffix, essentially. And so um, I came up with just a fake form. It was just a CV form, the simplest I could think of, ba, right? To show the illustration here. I was thinking, though, that eat would be good. And so um, this first one, and I wanted to go through this since we came up with this after the stream. Um, the first one here, all right, first of all, let us acknowledge how cute this language is if a cat is ever doing anything to a mouse or vice versa. Because the cat chased the mouse is Mumu Chichi Tsuhmutsuk. I'm sorry, Mumu Chichi Tsuhmutsuk. 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 Yeah. Tsuhmutsuk. I'm, I'm going to get, it's going to take me a bit. Mumu Chichi Tsuhmutsuk. That's how you do it. But, but yeah, Mumu Chichi. <laughs> and that is the cat chased the mouse. <laughs> All right. But now, for the mouse was chased, uh, the idea here was, um, like, we need to have some way to change the valency. So one way to do it is to keep it as a transitive verb, but make the object a content verb. So, tutu becomes the subject of the sentence. Uh, chasing becomes the object. And we put it in class nine, the warm abstract class. So, tsuhon is chasing. And then we have some verb and turn that into the uh, main verb of the sentence. I was thinking of eat, but we can talk about what exactly we want. And so, batsohto is just the example. And uh, the meaning here would be something like, the mouse ate chasing. And so the idea was like, basically took it, the mouse took it into himself, he accepted it, uh, he got it. Think about like when you hit the ground, you call it like eating dirt, that type of thing. And so, tu 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 hon, I really like these post vocalic H's, I'm just not good at them for right now for some reason. Uh, I think it sounds really nice. Um, anyway, so that would be the mouse was chased. Uh, and it's 
pretty straightforward. It'll mean it'd be a little longer. Uh, Jesse had brought up, this is again after the stream, what about um, participles? And, and so this kind of leaves that as an open question if we do this, if, uh, if uh, how participles are going to work, because this is basically just a whole thing, and so we still don't have a passive participle that we can readily construct. The other idea was to actually basically do the same thing, but shorten it up into a uh, into a suffix so we have the same sentence the cat chased the mouse you did better that time thank you and tutu and now it's become kind of a suffix here and so this is just the verb root to we don't have the class nine stuff anymore and then we have this bowl which is the suffix and right now it's intransitive. That's that's the important thing. So now this basically makes the verb intransitive, and so it only takes one agreement, that being the subject, and it takes the um, how do you call this uh, the the um, uh, intransitive. Um, you know, tilicity marking, that type of thing. So that's how that would have worked okay. if... If it had won. If you hadn't revealed. You did the scrolling. Well, the, the, you just saw it at a glance, it's and it could have been the case that one poll was one way and the others were the others. No, all three were the same way. All three were the same way. And so, um, what was the overall percentage, or did you even look? Well, I mean, it, it was 21 to 5. Wow. And so, like, whatever that breaks down to percentage-wise. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, about 75% overall, I would say. All right. Um, but, yeah, so the, the option number one won. And that's what we're doing. All right. So there we go. So uh, first thing, the, uh, the first step for us then is to decide on the meaning and then to decide on the form. So what do you think about eat? You like it? I do. All right. You think we should keep eat around or have it be an entirely different for, for... I'm I'm good with eat. No, I mean like when we actually come up with a verb. Oh, you mean like, okay, so now it's like grammaticalized and now there's a new form? Yeah, maybe. Like that? Yeah. Mm. I, what are you thinking? Um, I was thinking we might have a fancier word for eat. Like a sort of compound, if you will, or... Yeah, something like that. It's a crunch, <laughs> yes. I was just thinking it could be fancy. Because they think of themselves as fancy because they are fancy. Maybe their their verb for to nibble became their eating because they always nibble mm -hmm. delicately. Mm -hmm. So some sort of diminutive off a of bite, maybe. Alright. <clears throat> Alright then, well let's go to... I have so many things I need to enter. I keep thinking at some point I'm going to update the document and then I keep forgetting. Oh, I updated the document some. Created it up a little bit. <clears throat> See, sorry. Jonathan thinks we should consider fall. Like cats falling on their feet. Do they ever fall, though? Or do they just jump? Yeah, hang on a second. This is a cat document, right? Is it up to date? That's a good question. What a... It's like I did a bunch of stuff here, but I don't... Like you did stuff to the romanization section, or...? Yeah, yeah, I did. I suppose this is the way to tell for sure. Well, I absolutely did this. Yeah, and that wasn't there before. 
No, so I guess I did. I guess I just didn't do as much thinking as I thought I did. It's like, look at this. Look at this. It shouldn't be there. And then I did that, and that, and that. But like, that shouldn't be there, right? This shouldn't be there, certainly. Right? And we do have a TH. We don't have a DH. We don't have a DH, yeah. We don't have a fwa or a hya. Yeah, I don't know. And then we don't need this, or that, or that. Yeah. Uh, that's a little bit better. All right, whatever. Um, on to wherever the verbs lie, wherever we're going to be writing this, in the verb section, presumably. I would hope so. Okay. We've we've done all these. We've done all those. That's good. Hey CJ. Ooh, Mateus has a thunderstorm going on. That sounds delightful. Hmm. Nice. <laughs> Skyrock. Nice. It's a really random side note. Mm -hmm. Did you ever watch the show today's Today's special when you were a kid. Never heard of it. It came on like right after Sesame Street. Huh. On our channels anyway. Yeah. And it's like at night this mannequin comes to life and there's like little mice in it and everything and they come out to you and they can tell look. Hmm. Was it before or after the movie Mannequin? I don't know. I don't I've never Today's special. His name was Jeff, I think. Oh, I'm pressing it. it. Oh, it's Canadian. Canadian. Press on it, press on it, press on it, press on it. Press on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the easiest way to get stuff. 1981 to 1987. How about that? And, yeah, so apparently it was a Canadian show, but it ran on PBS in my area. And, um,. And yeah, it's like it starts, every episode starts with Jody carrying a mannequin, Jeff, upstairs. And then Muffy, who's a, a little mouse, uh, says the, the magic words, and it brings him to life. Oh my goodness. Okay, now look at the movie Mannequin really quick. No, in Wikipedia. No, but I was, I was looking to see... Muffy Mouse. Yeah, because there were some other puppets, too. Um, like the security guard and anyway, but yeah, it's like part puppet, part real. My goodness. I think we need to watch an episode of it. I think you would like it. Uh, dis disambiguation. Wow, which film? 87. <laughs> so, so that came out after. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, we're now going to uh, go ahead and spread the news that the film Mannequin was inspired by today's special. <laughs> All right. Um, Ooh, see. hey, Megan. Have a... Oh, so anime fan, it was on Nickelodeon for some people. They also carried it. Um, so, like, it depended on what area you were in. And so, um, yeah, for me, it was on PBS. I wouldn't have been able to watch Nickelodeon because that required cable. But it's a very cute show. Like, I have very fond memories of it. Mm -hmm. Although, whenever I was, like, in college and mm -hmm. had memories of it, I thought, like, I was making it up because it was, like, one of those things where it's, like, not everybody knew about the show. And when you try to talk about the show where a mannequin comes to life at night, people are looking at you like I had a show like that. It was a... Um, except that I, I, I did find it. It was a, it was a Croft, you know, one of those... Marty and Croft ones or whatever, mm -hmm. but it was um, a show where there was like a band and one of them was like a gigantic Muppet whose name was Baxter. Uh, anyway, it turns out that one was real. Nice. Yeah. Um, well, so was today's special. Thank you very um, much. All right. Okay. So um, I, I think we should start doing this. We didn't need the purple note anymore. It's now completely uh, enmeshed. So we should start doing this. Okay, playing time verbs. 
by the way, we need to name this language. We do need to name soon. this language. Yeah, it's pretty. We're we're at the point where we can do that. Yep. Length times verbs uh, conjugate for a number of merry things. Um, you really want to do a study to, to like compare stylistically mm -hmm. season one, two, three, and four in terms of how the grammars are written. Mm -hmm. They rabbit along merrily. There, now it's season one. Um, hold on. Uh, you were so like straight and focused in your writing in season one, I think. Mm -hmm. You think so? Yeah, I think it was season three where it really picked up. Season two, we had some mm. canonness, mm. but. All right, um, try to take it back a little. No, don't take it back. Mm. I, I love this version. And in fact, I think we should write all our grammars this way for our languages. Mm. Furthermore to that, they additionally. Um, Thank you, see? Tincture Overcast says, yeah, season one was much more restrained. Season two is where we started to go off the rails. And, and I trust their opinion because they have recently, like, essentially watched everything in a shorter amount of time, which means better memory. Oh, nice, Megan. You need to add a hyphen and furthermore to make it furthermore. Maybe add an extra R. There are more. They additionally contain multifarious suffixation strategies, per se. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> oh, free quickatives is a good word. Do you want to know? Um, oh, yeah, that, that was season two. Mm -hmm. um, I, I used to think that per se was spelled like P-E-R and then S-A-Y, one word, mm -hmm. as per se. Oh yeah, per each say. I mean, it, it seemed to make sense. Everybody is allowed to have their say, and, uh, and so then we listen to each person per se. Per each say, yes. That's right. Indeed. <laughs> I like Jake's spelling better. <laughs> okay. Ooh, odd rock, is there a talking? Yeah. Uh, so Talking Rock is uh, from the, uh, that was the first LCC, um, um, Conling Relay? Thank you. First LCC Conling Relay. It was the Talking Rock. It was, I thought it was a pretty good one. Let's see, somebody steps their toe in a rock and a rock says, hey. I was like, oh my gosh, are you a talking rock? Yeah. And you're like, why didn't you say something about me tripping over you? He goes, because I'm a mean talking rock. <laughs> and then the person picks up the talking rock and throws it into the lake. Poor rock. It was fine. It didn't need to breathe air. Um, okay. Uh, but here, I actually wanted to say something here. Uh, verbs, uh, verbs conjugate uh, for telicity. Uh, as well as for polarity, negative. Uh, verbs show agreement with a subject and optionally, no, it's an object uh, depending on the transitivity, nope, of the verb. All right. um, I think that's it for right now, right? Um, well, yeah, because um, what we need to say more specifically would go in the section. It wouldn't go here. So I think that's it for now, yeah. All right. Um, okay. it should be provided for this below just because it's like otherwise we will deal with it in the space we provided you that's right okay okay that's that's what we did all right all, all right. right um 
How do we do subsections? <laughs> uh, CJ. Mm. Season two got a little wild. Season three went off the rails. And, and right now we're just careening at high speed. <laughs> Sounds about right. Um, and Matthias, I actually don't know. Is, do you know if there's going to be another LCC? Soon-ish? I mean, it I was. Assume. I don't know. Every other year, and then with COVID, I think that got uh, a little messed up. Okay. Um, <clears throat> you know what? Here, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep that, but I think we're just gonna discuss Felicity here real quick. Oh. Um, David's hitting the microphone again. Yeah. Uh, rather than... And yes, again. Megan, we are. For tensor aspect. Um, Speaking of patrons, by the way, I don't want to forget to announce that we finally got confirmation for our schedule for Clexicon, and we will be able to do the live stream on the 27th from 12 to 2. Yeah, we might have to cut it a little short. We may, <clears throat> yes, because we present somewhere else at 3, and so... Yeah, you know, parking can be a thing. It takes a bit to walk from the parking lot to the convention center. It is where I'm thinking of, and we're going to have to... Oh, we may need to make it 11 to 1 then, so that way we can really leave right now. How on earth are we going to be awake by that time? We have to be awake and showered. Because I'm already going to wake us up. Oh, now Megan's aunt is getting remarried. Maybe we should move it, uh, move it another week. <laughs> the only other week is this weekend. Oh, yeah. Is that too soon? Right after, I'm like, we can totally do it the 27th. Do you want to change it to the 20th? I don't know. Does everybody else want us to change it to the 20th? I didn't laugh. I mean, Megan's aunt is apparently getting remarried in the afternoon on a Saturday. This isn't a nighttime soiree. No, you don't have to be so judgy. <laughs> Goodness. Goodness gracious. Everybody be home in time for supper? Hmm. Oh, Jake, it would be better for you to move it. Ragdoll's cool either way. Mm -hmm. Matei says this Saturday works. Yeah. Let's do it. Okay, so make it the 20th? Yeah, we're going to do it the 20th. All right, I got to put that on my calendar. I, I will just say, like, I've been to the Anaheim Convention Center many times, and if we're going to be parking across the street where I think we will, they share that parking lot with Disneyland, it's a really big parking lot, and then it's like you have to walk, and the convention center is actually set quite a ways back from where it is. And then there's this huge crowd of people going back and forth. Like, they have BlizzCon there. And then, like, it's cavernous inside this thing. I have no idea where we're presenting. And so I'm imagining, like, you know, we start the stream at, like, 2 p.m. right on the dot. Then we have to do what we're going to do to actually get into the car, and that'll take 7 to 10 minutes. And it takes like 20 minutes to drive there. And so I was just concerned about us being like technically inside the center at like 2.54 and then needing to find a room and get there and set up our computer to actually present at three on the dot. Oh man, Jonathan, you're on the short end of the stick again. We have to have one stream where it's just, we only do whatever Jonathan wants. It sounds like he loses every single poll, and now we're moving the stream to a time that he doesn't like, but everybody else does. Why are you looking at me? You changed it, so I wonder what you have against Jonathan. <laughs> Jonathan, I want you to know. <laughs> oh, yay! This... Since this poll went the way Jonathan wanted, we can change it to the That's 20th. right. It's all balanced now. Okay, so now. I've got that there, and I'm also going to put... We don't have Plexicon in yet. At three. So, on panel. Okay. So now that is on calendars and what not. Okay. Woo! Uh. <laughs> yes, CJ, 
make it a marathon stream and call it the Jana Thon. <laughs> yes. Um, and as you're typing that, I was thinking something else, but I forgot. Okay, I think that's it. I don't know where I'm going Patron with this. Patron live stream this Saturday, 12 p.m. Pacific. Be there, be square. For some verbs, it would be like really hard to make them the opposite of what they, they more semantically align with. Like, I'm imagining this window just taking its sweet time breaking. Just a little crack here. Sweet it all. Yeah. It's breaking. Uh, kind of like after you get the first ding on the windshield where it starts out mm. as this little ding and then you watch as the crack just grows along over time. Is that how you spell A-T liquidly? <laughs> Eight liquidly? <laughs> At least without the K, I could like parse it. Otherwise, yeah, this, that, that works for me. I don't know if that's right at all, but like the I other way, all I could see was eight liquidly. There's also, until this slowly. Uh, no, no, yeah. no. Right. this is how it has to be. Right. <laughs> Fair point, Jonathan. We will no longer hold that. We will instead hold a Jonathan. Nice. Slow-mo video just for the... I mean, that, AT -like. honestly, that is what I think of. If you talk about, like, a window breaking, but it being AT, like, I think about it breaking in slow motion. Like, it kind of has to be, right? Yeah. <gasps> I forgot to turn on the fan. Yes, you did. Did you remember? No, because I thought you didn't turn it on on purpose because you decided you didn't want it on anymore. Do you want me to go turn it on? I mean, if, it, if I were sitting where you were, I would get up and turn it on. Hold this. All right, let's see here. I think if we just go and search here for social security number, it should just pop right up. And then I can just flip it around for all to see. Hang on a sec, I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn off natural scroll. There are settings. There's high, medium, and low. Hold on a sec. Where is, where is the natural scroll? There it is. Do you want me to turn off natural scroll for you? You did not, did you? <laughs> why, why wouldn't you go with natural? Because it doesn't make any sense. You are unnatural. Okay, anyway. <laughs> oh, I like uh, Ted, this is fine. Oh, goodness, Cameron, those are some spellings. Wow. Oh my gosh, magpie. When you were in France, you got a jams. That's great. Okay. Um, oh, bye, Tungi. So sorry you have to leave this early, but so happy oh, you were man. here. Wow, good to see you. 
We sure do enjoy having you here. Okay. Uh, so, let's see. Uh, in, okay, my time, there are three different sets of auxiliaries. Uh, and I need, um, I'm gonna need uh, bullets. Oh, I will take care of the images because you have to search the files. Okay. Do you have a particular image that you were hoping for? Uh, you haven't done the wizard yet, so I can't, I can't <gasps> do that. Oh my gosh, that's right, the wizard. I forgot. Okay. Um, Not that I'm judging you, but you haven't done the wizard yet. Let me get to the group section. With a patient object. Okay. And, and then just a second will. as I... with a recipient. Receptive object. And that is a R for short. Okay. Good. Now. Get ready for it. Oh my gosh, how long is it taking to update? There we go. Oh! Nice. Okay. Uh, I, I can do the other one. Each of these uh, uh, transitivity types takes different sets of um, what would you call these? Uh, Oh, Jonathan, so there, um, on one of my Instagram drawings from, was it this past week or the week before? I forget. Anyway, um, was a, it's two cats dressed up as wizards, and uh, David had said he would try to make a wizard emoji, and um, I'm still waiting for it. I forgot. Yeah. I'll do it. Okay. <clears throat> I can do the other bullet point for the next one. So then I think we have all the cats in play that we have right. in our, our folder, I believe. momentarily. First, let us dive into the lonely world of intransitivity. Oh. This is really beautifully written. <laughs> okay. Um... Now, let's see, some examples. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna do some examples. Ooh, that one came out large. Ooh, no, no, um. Check that out. Yeah. Cat. Okay. <laughs> this reads like an essay I'd write. <laughs> 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 oh, that's amazing, CJ. And honestly, I would love to read an essay like that. I tell you what, it's at, it would at least make me giggle as I read it. Uh, okay. 
Okay. Uh, intransitive. Um, Atelic. Uh, let's start there. So it would be. Okay. I think it's got to be May. No. Well, because, it, right. Kekame is the cat sleeps. Is sleeping. That is actually the cat is sleeping. That's Tealik, that's the cat slept. It was wrong in our document, which means I have it wrong on Instagram. But where? In what document? This document. I looked it up. Where is it? Had we written it? Yes, because so if, that's... I, if I search for Kahme, it'll come up with something? Yeah, it's Tealik. Like it's the it was here somewhere. But that's that's Kahmed. I listen, I I think you deleted where it was. Oh, I think it's right here. There. Okay, but that's this, where it is. Okay, but this isn't right because it Well, I used that as my my basis for the drawing this week. Um. And so now I have a grammatical error and the drawing still stands. It's just a cat slept instead of is sleeping. Yeah. Dag nabbit. Well, it also needs a B. Yeah, so it's all sorts of wrong. Yeah. I'm really sorry. I blame you. You're right, too. <sighs> at least the cat's having a nice little, little sleep in the drawing. That's right. I mean, at least you can be satisfied that when, you know, Bibleridian saw it on Instagram. He looked at it and just went, just like that. <laughs> Maybe had a little chuckle as he went back to his dragon. I'm going to have a Copico to celebrate what Jake just said. <laughs> because in River Cat, they just don't pronounce the final B. <laughs> Thank you, Jake. Copico. I'm officially River Cat. I get one. <laughs> Because you're the judgy cat. In High Valerian, river cats are otters. Oh, for some reason I thought it was a dog. River dog. Mm -mm. River cats are otters. That's and fair. sea cats are sea otters. Cheers. Cheers. <clears throat> Alright. Let's celebrate this. Go be go. When you just have to celebrate something. Celebrate mediocrity. <laughs> <laughs> of getting something mm. totally wrong. Oh, that's so good. Mm. Mm. But we can also celebrate our new bullets here. Mm. See? Poor Bibleridian, though. He's, he's always trying. He's always playing catch up. Can never, um, never impress his parents the way Sibleridian can. I really don't know about you. All right. Sibleridian's like, oh, oh, you got some new followers on your YouTube channel. That's cool. I just went to the International Space Station, helping fix a few things. You know. Anyway, but right on with that YouTube thing. You're crushing it. <laughs> mm. <laughs> <laughs> indeed, indeed. Okay. Cat is sleeping. Let's um, pop a little A T look on there. Uh, let's put it. You know what? Let's let's put it front and center. Okay. Mm, good call, Mateus. It has to happen. Pass I'm H just like. really fascinated by how big this bullet point is as opposed to the other ones. Like, why? I 
mean, I'll take it. It's cute. It fits right in this box. <laughs> it takes up a whole box. Um, and in this bigger version, see you can't see this really on um, Discord because it's so small, but you can see I outlined it to try to make it stand out a little bit more. Oh yeah. Um, and so that was a whole thing. Um, and actually, I don't even think you can see it here. It's actually double outlined. So if you look really closely, you'll see that the orange, that darker orange is not a solid line, but is actually a double outline of a different orange. What? Yeah, just a second, I'll pull it up for you so you can see it on here. Uh, I don't think you have to, let me show you. There you go. What? Yeah, it's a double outline. How did you even do that? Very slowly and carefully. My goodness. But yeah, look, you can change the, uh, the size of the, of the uh, images. And then what they can't see, so okay, so scroll up so they can see the, the scarf cat. Okay. And make that all big for a second, because this is another thing that got lost. This is like a, a watercolor scarf, like all Hermes style. Mm -hmm. And that totally got lost. Like the cat almost totally gets lost uh, in the emoji on Discord, mm -hmm. just because the background and everything. But, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here we go. So now we have that. Okay. Do we need to say anything else about intransitive? Kind of. It's now we've got to look up fishing cats. Everybody's talking about them. Above the M. Oh my goodness. I now like fishing cats as well. Those are cute. Super cute. It's kind of like an ocelot mixed with a jaguar. Look at those nice stripes. Mm-hmm. Mm. Roman's dad must be a fishing cat. Look at those. Uh, totally his head right there. <laughs> That's a green man. Mm. I like how they go from stripes to spots. That is super cool. Okay. Learned something new today. Mm. There's a baby. Oh, that's really cute. Okay. I will pay attention now. I will stop looking at all the cute pictures. Mm -hmm. I'm back. I'm here to work. There's a contrast in... Uh, it's a good question, Mateus. What expression would the cat language use for the equivalent of it's like herding cats? <laughs> I mean, uh, my first thought was was mice. It's like uh, corralling mice. Um, but they're in committees, so they're already corralled. They self corral. I suppose, but you know, to 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 the cats, what the mice are doing looks like absolute nonsense, utter gibberish. Mm -hmm. Just looks like they're all going, you know, with no purpose. And when they ask for an explanation, it's even more confusing to them. Or to go with what you apparently think about dogs, it's like teaching dogs. <laughs> Just notice that most of these are actually high agreement. It's like making a committee. <laughs> <laughs> and okay. And, and it's for my variations occur with T like transitive actions. 
Um, it would be an unusual context that would require a Tulip version of sleep that is essentially It's like hosting a conlanging live stream. <laughs> no. Oh, tell you what, sometimes you do get that sharp transition. Mm -hmm. That's no fun. Okay, so one of the reasons I really wanted the Copico was so we could do it and I could enjoy my, my kombucha without having Copico in the middle of it. Yeah. And today's kombucha, it's a little humid in here, as you can tell. Um, we have Mystic Mango. Sounds good, right? When does something raw ever sound good? Um, all the time. Every fruit plate we have is raw. That's really right. Mm. You don't need to pretend. Nobody believes you. All the people who, who know the goodness of kombucha do. Um, Getting my nine billion probiotics. So the only thing that makes me leery of deleting, you know, this stuff yet is that we have the proto forms in there. Yeah, I would prefer we keep it for now. The um, reason I was writing this, though, was to get rid of it. We can... Can we put it in a table? Well, I don't know what we can do, but we'll have to do something. Um, let's see. Now let us look at transit verbs. Huh. Nice. <laughs> Transit tickers. I, you know what? I approve. I approve. Um, actually, wait. I think I know where to put this. Okay, um, although we do need to note the verb meanings as well, because I don't think we have that in our list up above yet. Um, and no. so I will need to save that. But what if we like pop... Um, well, we need to decide what these things are going to be in their modern forms. And then we'll have everything down in the lexicon. So... Well, having it in the lexicon does not mean we're going to remember that that is the protoform that gave birth to it. Maybe. I'm telling you from experience, as we have more than once dug through a document to try to figure out where a suffix or prefix came from, <laughs> we won't remember. Okay, and so... By the way, uh, uh, Chase was like, let's do, let's tea lake.
idea. I'm trying to think of a way to make it palatable to you, though. As I, I start so. shoving protoforms everywhere. Oh. Um. Sorry. Oh. Do the same thing I did for another online document. I've got this wrong. What's the what? What is Chase? It's it's Z O H. That's what it is. I don't know what I was thinking. I don't know what you're doing. Okay, uh, it's that. But uh, let's. I'm gonna be moving this after I finish typing it and making it look pretty. So please don't get upset with what's happening on the screen. Oh. We got it. It's, it's long. It's long. So that means. Sorry, these were wrong. It should have been two. Two mutuk. That might have been wrong too. My bad. Long bow. Mumu tu 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 mutok. Mumu tu 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 mutok. That's a lot easier. Okay, so what I'm doing, by the way, is, and I'm going to get rid of things as we do this, because now we have protoforms mm -hmm. as well as meaning. Um, this is going to be moved to the end of the um, historical changes okay. notes, uh, which is where we have it for another language document where we worked on, where we found it really handy to keep track of where all the grammaticalizations came from. And so I'll also add to it, um, you know, like the nouns, the noun class markers and things like that, just to basically keep it track. So that way, anytime we're like, where did something come from? We just can search for grammaticalization and find the full list. Sounds good. If you uh, chop up an onion, it makes it a lot easier to throw it away, but then you have to endure the chopping. And then also, if we end up changing their modern forms at all, we still have the proto forms here. In terms of like maybe to need is a, a different modern form or something. Yeah, 
this too. Okay. Mm. okay. okay. the list there because you still have the list but I took out all the green now all right good all right and we need a um, new word for give or something we need Did a we? we need a Tran uh, an AR transitive verb. And we had not yet done that. Yeah. Um, we could obviously have, um, obviously. Mm hmm <laughs> I like how I throw that obviously in there, like, it's so obvious to everyone. But you. No. Um. It might be. We could have, um, something like to hand or to send or some sort of transaction like that. Was it this language where I had said like we would just throw a noun in there like paw and that would be like you give it by paw and so on? Hmm. I mean that makes sense if you paw it. That would make sense. That's a good argument. What's the word for paw? Front paw. I actually suppose it doesn't matter. We need the older one. Um, you know what? I'm going to go backwards. Cause, um, the old, old one is this one. Yar. There we go. Yar, she blows. Indeed. So that is the old one. Okay. And... Yar. Right there. It does come out, so they wait. Uh, yeah. Alright, so. something that they can give, I think. Um, we have clothing. We have um, rock. Those are nice. ice. You could give some ice. Um, let's see. A shovel. You too, look, it's L. Do you what, like any what of those is, options? Yeah, what's the word for shovel? Shovel is DJ. And what did we decide the order was going to be? Uh, the direct object is going to be sandwiched between the subject and indirect object, and then the verb agrees with the two outside ones. Thank you. Okay, cat is giving a shovel. That's too bad. Um, A cat is giving a mouse a show to save two characters twice. There you go. You're welcome. Well done. Okay, let's see. Um, and then yeah. Let's... Yeah, mots and os. Yeah, that's us. I'm gonna have to fix this. This was over. Oops. 
I like this. Hey, Carl. So good to see you. Indeed. Oh. Well, I've read Persepolis before. And, okay, so... Transitive auxiliaries. Mm. Receptive auxiliaries. Uh, now agree with the indirect object of the sentence. This means we still have the class one subject agreement. Agreement. <laughs> In no, but uh, where is the indirect class two object with, uh, rather than the what is that class? No agreement for that. Uh, for that now. Um, then we have the telicity suffixes. That's clear. <laughs> Is it? Yeah. Agramont was uh, a character from, I believe, Orlando Furioso, which is an incredible book. I move this, I think we can um, delete quite a bit here. All right. Do you need the negative ones still? Uh, yeah, because now I'm going to write negation. Okay. Okay. And after you do that, then I'm going to move that list to the end of the historical section so it's all out. From everything else. Um, though, uh, telicity is vitally important positive polarity sentences, it's all but ignored in negation. Instead, there are three different negative auxiliary suffixes, um, and they can be chosen regardless of the semantics of the verb. Mm -hmm. Three uh, uh, different negation strategies have to do with the severity. Is that how you'd say it? You know, yeah, I guess um, mm -hmm. it's. Well, that is interesting. Um, Doubly interesting because I guess then the pronunciation is ruined. Or Ruland as opposed to Roland. Why'd they change it? Hmm. The severity. I'm trying to think of what the, the hmm. intention. Intensity. Oh, intensity. I like that better. Hmm. Here are uh, here are some illustrative. Mm 
Okay. Um, can you uh, scroll on there to uh, like the negative forms Ooh. in the charts, the quick reference section? Oh, the quick reference, yes. Green. What does non-immediacy mean? Where's it come from? That one comes from Stalk, I believe. Yes, it comes from to Stalk. Okay, and then, so non-immediate negation, now go back. And then refusal is to squat. And indifference is to ignore. Yeah. differently. Okay, so then let's do okay. anyway. Cat may not sleep. And then Mets is the last one. Cat will not sleep. Um, let's see. Uh, okay. Using these correctly really depends on the situation. For example, if one is discussing what is not happening right now, one should decide on a uh, refusal. Wow. Oh, hey, check that out. It's for somebody who refuses stuff all the time. That is a refusal thing you do. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> <laughs> nice. Let's see. Should uh, decide on whether it would be the subject has consciously decided that it isn't happening or that it simply isn't happening because the subject didn't give it any thought. Or it simply wasn't relevant to the immediate interests of the subject. For example, right now I'm not eating uh, popcorn. It isn't because I refuse to. It's because I didn't give it a oops, sorry, give it a single thought until I typed it. And it seems like a lot of effort to make popcorn. Plus, it wouldn't be very kind to those watching us right now. As eating popcorn for me, David Peterson, is rather a production. <laughs> Thus, me not eating popcorn right now would be classified as indifferent negation. On the other hand, <laughs> I adamantly refuse to eat an onion right now. Wherever. If one were offered, I would shun it. That, to 
type of negation is outright refusal. However, um, looking at something in the future or a potential future, um, is uh, would be non immediate negation. That is, it's something one would be thinking about not doing. Or perhaps the negation wasn't total. Uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> Score. That is very accurate, Jake. Shockingly accurate. Embarrassingly accurate. <laughs> I'm seeing where this is going. Uh, for example, but. Uh, and this isn't hold on. This isn't necessarily restricted to the future. For example, if one were to ask me, have you decided to um, to find every trace of onion in your house? and toss it into the fire. No, toss them into the fire. And uh, there, my response would be, I have not decided. But, more accurately, I have not decided yet. This, this would be a perfect time to use the non-immediate negation, and I'm going to get rid of the... Nice. Hopefully this has been clear. I am a writer, David Peterson. I now leave it to Jesse. There you go. I was like, Jake's comment. <laughs> Okay, here is what I'm about to do. I want you to see what I have highlighted. Yes. I'm about to hit delete. Do away with it. Now, I'm going to take these, and instead of deleting, I'm going to cut. Right on. There we go. The wind came to join you, Jonathan. Of art of the art of language invention was written on a very old um, chair, one of those couchy type chairs, with uh, a cat on either side of me. It would stir every so often when I would move. Oh, here's where people were saying for Oh dear. I, I got it. Thank you. All right, and then... Here, I'll put some bolding in here that'll help. Put those there. Okay. Now the verb section has no more notes scattered about. Mm. Everything is something that we have added. I'm going to bold some things here. That could be very... Woo, we're almost done with this. Yes. Indeed, Tincture. He did not move until that book was finished, so both cats could stay. They were very, very kind. Where's, uh... <laughs> I understand, Magpie. What, what do you 
you turned it in. There we go. All right, now let's get to the Have business you? of the day. No, that'll be next. Let's, um, uh, there isn't really a section for it, but let's uh, talk about passivization. Just thinking that if you tossed every bit of onion out of the house, all the leftovers in the fridge would have to be tossed. <laughs> all of them. Oh my goodness. Well, there you have it. Sometimes, you know, sometimes it's nice to think that, or to believe, or maybe to fool ourselves to think that what we are doing conling-wise is all right. It's okay. But then Bibliridian shows up and declares, this has been a useless day, and you know for absolute certain that no, nothing you've done is worthwhile. Indeed. It's all done. All of it. Throw it away. Strike it. Let us start a new language. The word for cat shall be... <coughs> Write that down. My word for cat is going to be bib. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> mm. I feel like I know your cat's ragdoll. I love it. Mm. Well, you successfully took my heart out and stamped upon it, so you can add that to your ledger of things accomplished today. Uh, I'm sorry to hear that, Bib, because that really sucks. It also sucks when like, you do a bunch of work and then you realize you thought of a better way to do it and so you redo it all and it's like, well, I just undid five hours of work and spent more time on that. Transitive verbs. Not that I've ever done that. I'm trying to decide right now if ancient recipient verbs, if the recipients can be uh, passivized, you know, for. So, like, in other words, uh, the cat gave the mouse a shovel, the mouse was given a shovel. I guess the, the question is, it, could it ever be the other way? Well, I think it's would you ever have the same verb that can sometimes take um, AP agreement and sometimes take AR agreement. Because if that happens frequently, then either you say, no, you can't passivize for a recipient, or it would be ambiguous. Um, and so it would either, you know, mean like, so like, you know, cat shovel was given could mean that the mouse was given a shovel or the shovel was given a mouse. Though, no, that wouldn't be possible because there's agreement. Yeah. So I think we should just say that's yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Then we don't have to worry about, okay, then uh, AR transitives have to be applicativized before they can be classified. Seems a little much. At least for this, because these are thick, thick verbs. The three Ks. Yes. And two Cs. Oh my. That's a double oh Z, triple K. Thick. All right. <laughs> and the placement of one of the K's might surprise you. All right. Obviously between the T and H. <laughs> that is right, because it is T K H I C C K K. This is the kind of thick it is. Oh, my. Not that big. Not even that big. There we go. Also, I might need to do. Where's Where's Miami Nights? Where's Miami Nights? Your what? Miami Nights. Oh, Miami! I kept hearing. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> wow. All right. 
Um, also, Brian's here. Happy birthday! Hey! Happy birthday, Brian. And also, uh, uh, Brian, just so you know, you now unofficially share a birthday with Graham. So. And by unofficially, he means we don't think you do. Yeah, but for... But I apparently don't enunciate very well. For our intents and purposes, it's good dark horse, um, uh, you now do. Uh, so, Graham, this is your unofficial birthday. Like, every day is your unbirthday, and then you have one birthday, but this is your, you know... Unofficial. Unofficial birthday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, transitive verbs can be passivized. You know what? Um, I, will, I, will, I would love if you would do, as I kind of, like, get to the point where we need to do stuff here. Um, since there's a good crop of people here, why don't we talk about uh, Copicon and maybe see if there's a way that we can share that link. Oh, I can because I can share links. You can? The administrator can. Oh. Other people can't share links. Nice. All right. Um, and so David started, which I, I need to pull up on our account so I can get the link. Um, but it's a Google poll to find out, like, hey, nice. if we did hold a Copicon, where are locations that you would be willing to attend? Yeah. And so it's really just a, a, an information gathering poll because we're trying to figure out like, are there locations that would be a higher hit? Um, since we are quite international, um, there's, you know, we, we wanna be able to hit as many people as possible. And so what we have provided is a list of locations, and actually David very carefully chose this list based on um, basically travel prices mm -hmm. in terms of like a generic, how much does it generally cost to fly to this location? And we you know, kind of had a cutoff point where it's like anything above that point, we're like, no, we're not gonna be able to, we wouldn't be able to get tickets. <laughs> <laughs> no, we wouldn't be asking other people to get tickets to travel to these places. Um, we tried to get a variety of places, um, you know, North America, Europe, so on. Again, looking at how, how much it was to, to travel there. Mm. Um, and we also included a couple locations specifically because we knew that it's rather cheap once you get there. Mm -hmm. um, it's pretty cheap to actually, like be there and eat and do things and so um there are some locations like we found out more recently just how cheap it was to to be traveling in budapest mm -hmm. and how um it was like the things that that you could eat and do it's like it costs so much less than in other locations um same was true for the uh warsaw and i believe krakow was the other oh, yeah. one specifically for those poland is really cheap and so we did include you know those kinds of options and then also again just options sort of everywhere there's also an ability to write in a location if you think we've missed it um, and we should consider it uh, so this is by no means a final poll for like where it's going to be it is just like hey let's find out so we've shared it with the patrons, but here I'm sharing the link here. Um, so um, please be like, you know, clicking on it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know where I was gonna go with that because I said, please be, and then I started reading a comment and I was like, where am I going? Uh, so that, that was an odd construction, but um, you know, there it is. So you can find it. Uh, so if you haven't had access to that link yet, we want you to have it. Yep, exactly, right, Jonathan? Please be clicking on it. <laughs> That's such a weird thing to say. It's a lick And there we, yes, yes, it is a lick It's um, do the slowest click ever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe, Karis, maybe that's where I was going. Goodness only knows. Um, anime fan. If that means you're leaving for now, stay grandma. Um, yeah, we looked, we did look at, at Australia prices, but oh, it was hmm, kind of expensive. Yeah. Um, and so we, it, we did find Korea and Japan had some locations that were cheaper to travel to from, you know, different places around the world. And Dark Horse wants to know how good we are at cooking. 
Uh, Jesse is very, very good, and um, I have potential. That's, I think, the kindest way you could say it. I'm not, like, terrible or anything. I, I have potential. I just need a lot more practice and a bit of instruction. Yeah. There are certain things I do very well. Um, but, like, oh, no, uh, Carl is great. Unless you're saying that I am so-so, and then I'll accept that, but Carl is great. Um, and, yeah, the potential of doing a language that was... Um, entirely done with food, it's certainly out there uh, as a potential. Um, but it's kind of, it's something that I don't really have the, the culinary skills to pull off. Plus you're going to be dealing inherently with something that is nonlinear, and so that you have to take that into consideration, and so essentially you're building a nonlinear language. Um, and you have to take all that into consideration. It's a very interesting project. Like It's a very inter interesting thought experiment. It's certainly not one that I can pull off, not one that I would ever attempt to pull off, but I would love to see somebody do it. Um, and I could, I would certainly offer thoughts. Like, I have lots of ideas. Uh, but, you know. The other, the other problem is that, of course, just like, you know, imagine Imagine with the sounds that you produce in a language that you had as strong a reaction to those sounds as you do to foods or tastes that you like or dislike. Like, imagine that to me, like, the sound, you know, F was like an onion. Like, that would be terrible. So now I'll flip that to the, uh, to the, the you know, the, um, this version of the, the taste language, right? And suddenly, it's like, how do you produce a language that somebody actually wants to eat, you know? Um, especially taking allergies into consideration. Um, I mean, like, otherwise you'd have to unnecessarily um, restrict the types of things that you could say. So that you're only saying things that are nice to eat. It, it's an interesting challenge. It's, it's kind of similar to the, the music language that I talked about, where it's like, if you take all the constraints into consideration, including having it be something that you actually want to listen to, suddenly it becomes more difficult. Um, but I think it's even more difficult with a taste language. Anyway, sorry. Um, and it was something I was going to. Oh, in Ragdoll, maybe moving to France. That's one of the locations, Ragdoll. And by the time yep. we actually hold it, mm -hmm. maybe you'll be there. Um, and yeah, the whole allergy things. But I do like, Jay, sorry, I'm allergic to trolls. <laughs> um, but yeah, that it would be interesting. Actually, let's go ahead and do the, uh, yeah, the elevated patient, now subject. Not subject, now subject. Oof, yikes. Um, uh, triggers subject agreement. Passive auxiliary and the old verbal root. Ooh, magpie, nice. Food names. Mm. That's what they would be. I think taste team is the one I've heard. Um, um, uh, triggers. Gus teams. Yes. Mm, that's, that's even better. I like it. Oh, that makes sense, Ragdoll. Okay. The show mer is expressed, and then we need to decide. Okay, now we've gotten to the point where we actually need to make some decisions. So. Is that? Okay, so. Um, in the 1970s, David Perlmutter created uh, a grammar called Relational Grammar. Uh, and this is one that was uh, particularly well suited for passivization and applicativization. Let me see if I can show you uh, an example. Um, one that actually has an image like you would have seen. Sandra Chung did it. Here we go. Let's get this nice and big. All right. 
So, uh, for passivization, right, we have this, uh, the, the woman is eating an apple. P is, stands for predicate, and like this line here, it says like, this is what it starts out as. The woman eats the apple. But then, the next line is the next sentence. And you notice that two has become one, the apple is now the subject, and one has become what we call the chômeur. And the chômeur is the uh, former agent that's been relegated to either non-existence or a, uh, some other you know, Imagine. means of expression. Anyway, I thought this was a pretty cool, uh, pretty cool grammar that he came up with, relational grammar. Um, it was his uh, response to uh, you know, X-bar and trees like that. Um, I think that the primary reason it wasn't successful is because it was impossible to type, which was a big thing in the 70s. How do you do these like curves and things like that? It's just it's just impossible. You can't do that. You have to like write them in with pen or pencil, um, and that's that's my that's my theory on why it wasn't successful. Um, but yeah, he um, he created that. And Sandra Chung, who did a lot of work on Chamorro, she used it. Uh, and here, check out this book, Studies in Relational Grammar Two, edited by David Perlmutter and Carol Rosen. Pretty cool. Huh? Anyway. Oh, Matthias was saying half of that was cut off by the chat. Damn it! Gosh, did David. you see the Did you see the image? Because probably that, not, because that would be the. Okay, here we go. Oh, wrong image. Wrong image. Here we go. There it and is. And need to yeah. <laughs> there you go. Now it should be good. Yeah. So it was cut off. Yeah. There so. you go. Predicate. Agent, now chômeur, and then the, uh, the secondary object, which is now the primary, or secondary argument, which is now the primary argument. Ooh, it comes from the French word for unemployed. Yeah. <laughs> nice. That was, that was David Perlmutter's idea. All right. Um, anyway. So, so now I know what the chômeur is. Yeah. So now we need to actually do this. So let's, um, first, let's have a transitive. Sentence. You're going to start with an AR transitive? Well, let's do both. Oh, okay. And by AR, I mean AP. Right. When I said both, I meant T like an AT like. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, so the cat is chasing the mouse, the cat chased the mouse. And so these are both. Um, I'm going to do another thingy right here and we'll put these as, um, what do you call it? What's non-passive called? Active, thank you. <laughs> Active, all right. And then we have passive. So, uh, let's, we're gonna have this over here like that and then we're going to have um, I think that's so so um, so too home yeah okay okay and now, uh, I open question then, all right? Um, what do we want for the form? It's going to be eat uh, in the oldest form. What do we want for the form of this thing? Um, I mean, you know, one syllable max, but I think we got, you know, CA, uh, CV, VC, CBC, uh, throw out some options. So do you have any? That's a good question. We're high on um, uh, non-low uh, non -low harmony. So low might be a good one. That obviously restricts you to just ah and ah. Ha, ah, mech. That's funny. That's a big uh, derivational um, suffix in Turkish. Mac. <laughs> I mean, mac and cheese. 
Um, Mac is a good option. All right, let's get let's get some others to maybe do a little pull, a little pull ski. Could do could could use your BA suggestion and do like ba or ba or something like that. Yeah, we could throw it in there, ba. Uh, ba. So we have Mac and ba. And of course, the cat's favorite thing to eat we can't get, so no. So I say fish. Oh, I thought you were going to say nip. You know, cat nip. <laughs> but that would be high. It would be low. Suggestions. We're running high on those vowels. I'm running low on suggestions. What should the root for to eat be? All right, so we have a couple. We have Mac. Yeah. Oh, wait. I'm going to remember how to do it. There we go. Mac. And then just La. Yeah. Let's do two um, more. So we've got here uh, Tam, Tone, Wa, Tach. No, we can't do Tsam, it would be Z, essentially. Zam. Ta. Do you have any favorites? Although, I like Jake's Wa just because it reminds yeah, like me of Wa Wa. I like Wa too. Do you know about Wa Wa? No. I mean, of Philadelphia, like, that's like a very well known, um, kind of like a convenience store slash sandwich and soup place. I've no, never heard of it. I'll have to try um, it next time. And so I have eaten at Wawa's many a times. Okay, so what do you like of the of the rest? Ta, Don, Zam, and Club. Would the O actually give us the low? No. Then no. Um, Zam. I'm going to go with Club. Right. Get that, you know, swallow energy. It's kind of cool. I like that. All right, here we go. All right, pole is up. <laughs> that would, yes. <laughs> and so now we got to start thinking about the Whole, and it's like one thing that occurs to me is figuring out participles and figure out participles. <sighs> participles are fun. Yeah, but also though, I think I, I, I have decided it, it's... Um, <clears throat> it's a, it's a, nice. It, it's got to be... Um, Sam might have been interesting because it would have been, you know, nasal. Right. So. Oh, that's good though. Um, so uh, we have to. Um, I think that I know what I want to do. For. Wow, we've already got all the votes in, and we have a winner. Yeah, they were itching for a vote. Wowza. Okay, so poll is ending. You guys voted fast. All right. Um, and club it is. Okay, let's see how that comes out. Let's come. Um, and then, let's see. Uh, and then it, it takes AP transit agreements, and, just, and then. Um, Is this the Z E H? Was that meant to be for the mouse? It's a, it's just a it's just a call thing. Don't worry about it. It's okay. it's just doing what it needs to do. You it's, don't worry about it then. You don't worry about it. It's fine. It's just it's just this plus this, and then uh, I've forgotten already. This is transitive. 
Um. <laughs> it tastes right to throw the language out. <laughs> How do you, um, it's just the same, right? It's just these, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so then it's just, um, so whatever is og and ook. So what's og? Where did it come from? Um, og. Honor. Oh, the gh. Okay. And then, and then iq. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. I kind of like that. Reminds me of German. the subject agreement right here that's the subject agreement where's the verb cob is the new verb oh my gosh yeah yes <laughs> oh I'm tinctured so. this down That comes from that. Okay. Okay. So I think I, I see what's happening. Interesting thing about this passive. Just something to think about, something to throw out there. This H is always going to be intervocalic. And furthermore, this H is always going to be in between two of the same vowels, no matter what. Because this is always going to be ah. And so then the next vowel is either going to be O or ah. Actually, wait a minute, this one. No, not right here. It could be cob. Uh, um, Why do we have in our vowel chart that there's no longer an O? Cob gahok. That there's only a nasal O? Oh, that was an old thing. Um, so go ahead and make that O black. There, there was a time where it was like we weren't going to have an O anymore because it was going to raise, and then the only resulting, there, there would only be a nasal O left, and it was kind of funky, but we, we fixed it. Okay. Um, uh, explicate, explicate, Jake. There is, there is one instance, though, where this is not going to be the same vowel. Um, and so that would be, for example, uh, if the shovel was chased, it would be Cobb, um, Ya, yeah, Hoke, Cobb Ya Hoke. Because that's um, the 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 ek takes uh, non-low agreement, and the lowest you can get is oh, 
there, you cannot get an ah. So it's close, but not perfect. Come so. Could be down here. Or the elk. If the other one's becoming. Oh, but then we'd have to have a different passive form for all nine classes, potentially. Not really. Okay. Kind of a tough one. Is that something we could pull for yeah. patrons? Potentially. We do allow ah uh, oh, got so. Well, I suppose um, it wouldn't be very. It's not very. Um, it's not very useful though. Uh, well, I will potentially consider making that the poll. Uh, that uh, participles. Anyway, um, but yeah, you got to give me more. What is what is at he for the source of the participle? Oh, is it this? <laughs> <laughs> I think it is. <laughs> oh my. really yelling at me. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, the shomer is expressed. Shomer uh, is optionally expressed with the ablative. Let's see how those are shown below. Uh, because it makes a lot of sense since it came from eat. We need to change the translations of this passage. The mouse is being chased. change this not the cat is being chased okay there we go um and then passive uh no agent oh jake jake thought you were asking for a justification for killing the age not trying to explain where the form came from <laughs> he thought you would just pick up on that <laughs> And then help me out, Mumu. Yo. I am not even going to guess. Um, this is ablative. Uh, yo. Yeah. That is being chased this by. Is just yeah. ruined everything, David. I know, it just. Uh, I mean, the only other way to do it is to do it so it's like it's one line has this, the next line has that. Could make the bullet point smaller. Look, it's bigger than the actual space. You could change them to the scarf cat. I could change them if you want me to. No, that's all right. The scarf cat is tiny. I don't think that would fix it. I have to change it. Why isn't it like saved in there? You can, like you. you can try to change the top one to the scarf cat. If, if it puts it on one line, then great. If not, then no. Then I'll hit undo. 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 Then I get to find where we are. There we go. Get right there. And I'm going to go find my custom image. Make it a scarf cat. Didn't do it. Mm -hmm. Forget it. Undo. I tried. He's a skinny legend. <laughs> <laughs> a very classy one. It's kind of funny that we have, you know, Ho and Hoke. At least they're different. Uh, 
Yeah, we could also try changing those to A's again. And I could change it to the scarf cat. Oh, no. That's okay. All right. Could also make that, like, just a smaller font. No. <laughs> this is good. This is good. That's fine. All right. So either participles or... Or whether these passive yeah. forms are going to get shortened. Which you would assume that some of them would get used enough that it may, but... And in some there's really no shortening to be had, right? Uh, well, they, it, some of them will have A-O, but that's it. It's either going to be O-H-O or A-H-O, that's it. The ones that will be A-H-O are class 3, class 4, class 5, and class 8. In which case you would still get the, um, like the consonant, the thematic consonant showing up. It would just either be O. Or O or um, Alk. Yes, really... that's correct. Yeah. Okay. That makes way more sense to me. Okay. Yeah. Like in my head, though, I was like, oh my God, we're going to have to have nine different forms for the yeah. passive. But no, this makes sense to me. All right. I like that, that hmm. potential. We'll, we'll give it a look. We'll give it a look. So we're, uh, so yeah, when you get participles down um, and then. Once we do that, we can talk about adjectives, which is kind of a big deal. Uh, after that, we can start working on like, questions, maybe? Coordination. We haven't done coordination. Oh, God, yeah. Um, the, uh, what's I was going to say? Um, and then, um, can we... Um, what's going on with that space? I don't know. <gasps> oh, wow. Is that just the, the spacing by the, the font? Is it, it takes the biggest... Like, it's, it's something... It is, it's the actual font. Like no, there's... It, but it's not. Look, otherwise okay. when you highlighted go, it... Go to layout. Hold on, I'm, I'm going to show you. I know, I get what you're saying, and I'm telling you to go to layout and fix it. Oh. Either that or it really is just the font. Um, now it's on default spacing and everything. Oh, but look at mine. Yeah, that's weird. Huh. Yours is just messed up. Yeah. Mine looks perfect. <laughs> Stay grammar tethys. All right. But yeah, we're getting close here. We're getting close here to being able to mouse around. So let's also talk about the language name with one minute left to go. It's great timing. Yeah, I know. Maybe we don't have time to talk about the language name. Okay. Oh, bye, Ragdoll. Bye, bye, bye. Next time. All right. Well, then what do you want to do with this 30 seconds? I want to remind patrons that we have moved the patron live stream to two days from now. Yep. 12 noon Pacific. Yep, yep, yep. And so we'll see you then. Yeah. Um, oh, I also want to remind everyone that Copicon poll is out, so please don't forget to yeah. put your choices in. Like if you need, if you need to like to a reminder about the link or something, I don't know, like poke Jesse on Instagram for, for those of you who are not, you know, patrons and are in Discord and things like that. Um, well, let's put it on Twitter. But basically, yeah, we want to we want to try to figure out, um, like, we need at least, I don't know, like seven people, right? To, to make it a Kobe to, to justify it. We, we uh, just show up. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't mm. think so. Uh, no, so, so Jake, if you could make sure Minnie knows, that would be great. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if we get like at least seven people, that's enough. Because 
according to Jesse, eight people is a party. Six people is a party. Six people is a party. <laughs> <laughs> have parties all the time. Can you imagine showing up to a birthday party and there's only six people there? How sad. Wow, most of my birthday parties as a kid had like three friends and me. So, That's wow, sad. wow. Real rude. I, I've had parties that small, but it was usually because we were doing something extra and then like it cost money and my mom was like, you can only invite this many people. And then it was like, dang, who doesn't come? I, I prefer not to have that many people and you know this about me, mm -hmm. so. <laughs> Just real rude. <laughs> ah, anyway. Thank you, Magpie. Yes. And I did believe in myself. David is the one who needs to work on that. I never had to believe in myself. <laughs> anyway. Uh, <laughs> that, that ends today's stream. Thank you all for being here. And um, we will see you next week or if you're a patron in two days. And yeah, it's really, it's fine on my screen. It's something with your document. Yeah. Um, and so anyway, hope you all have a good week. Bye. Bye everybody, stay grammar.